The intro to Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers is exceptional. Starting from patch 4.4 to 4.5, we set up the Warrior of Light to be in a situation that he hasn't been in since the beginning of A Realm Reborn, which is that he's absolutely alone. With the exception of Tartaru, all of the members of the original Scions are out of commission at the moment. Even though we will be reuniting with them very quickly, it's still a point to be noted. So the Warrior of Light is guided by an unknown force that he doesn't know is a friend or an enemy, but either way, he goes to the Crystal Tower as directed and is eventually teleported to a whole new world, the first, which is where the Warriors of Darkness returned to after their encounter with the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. But the Warrior of Light doesn't know this yet, so soon as he enters the world, he believes it's just a really, really bright day until he finally realizes and finds out that it's actually nighttime for whatever reason. But soon after getting over his initial shock, he is welcomed by the mysterious presence that has welcomed him to the world of the first in order to find his friends and save this world and his own. And the interesting thing about being brought to another world through the crystal tower is that number one, future expansions are not limited to the actual space of Eorzea or the world of the source, which is where I believe Final Fantasy XIV takes place at. And as we know, there are 13 reflections of the source, meaning that there are 13 alternate worlds for our heroes to explore one day, which then leads into even more things, with architecture being completely different within the game as we see early on as we get to the Crystarium, entirely new cultures and dialects being used to describe characters or things that we already know about, and having entirely new dressing aesthetics in comparison to the source, meaning that also the aesthetic of the areas can change drastically without it feeling forced, because while the world of the source is a pretty big place and they have a lot of different architecture and a lot of different places with drastically different cultures whereas now by having these 13 reflections you can do some drastically different things with these areas and let's just say for example if these 13 reflections are supposed to maybe represent different aesthetics of different final fantasy worlds that would be an amazing thing i would love to see a world based off of the aesthetic of final fantasy 6 another world based off of the aesthetic of final fantasy 13 and so on and so forth i think that would be an amazing amazing thing to do because it would also give the developers room to do different things within the game so they wouldn't be burnt out and we will always be getting something fresh and new. But moving on from the implications that it could have for the game in the long term, let's talk about the narrative purposes of this. While we have personally gotten a lot of character development from people like Alize and Alpino in earlier expansions, Stankred, Yastola, and Yorianje really haven't gotten too much of a spot to shine. They've been here and there, but we really haven't gotten into any of their backgrounds or really gotten an extended period to be with them and really see how their personality shines through, as opposed to how we got to see that with Alpha Node growing throughout the Heavensward expansion and us having that journey with Alize when it comes to the coils of Bahamut and the lead up into Stormblood and the lead up into Shadowbringers before she was taken away as well. So those three need some very heavy character development in comparison to the level years. So from the beginning, I feel like Shadowbringers is going to be a much more deeply personal story in comparison to the other games, which were much more about setting up pieces. And make no mistake, I obviously believe that Stormblood is going to bring big changes to how we see the world in general, and maybe even shift my views on how we see certain characters in Final Fantasy XIV. But I feel like the core of this game is going to be about the actual characters as opposed to the end goal of what the characters are trying to do. And from my little bit of playtime from meeting Alize and Alpha Node once again, I'm going to believe that my conclusion is right so far. But you know what is also exceptional? My channel. And if you want to see more videos of me covering Shadowbringers, Nier, Dragonguard, Kingdom Hearts, and even the upcoming Scarlet Nexus, like and subscribe with notifications turned on. But with that being said, it's been Skips and I'm out.